Hey man, how you Wait, doing? Wait, this is really water, huh? This is this. Yeah, that's yeah, that's water. I that's, know what I know what you drink. I know, I know what you drink, but not out here. Because <laughs> what they cannot hear is what no, DL. They can't hear what was going on in the dressing room of the Kings of Comedy. No, not in this day and age they can't. No. That'd be a lawsuit waiting to happen, wouldn't it? Just... But I but I think that's what's changed. I think that uh now we're such a, a genteel, a, a supposedly genteel society, we pretend to be one thing and actually are another. And I think that yeah. that's, that makes it more difficult comedically to absorb as an audience, but not to give as a, as a comedian. Yeah. Do you think it's got you in a box a little bit? I just tend not to care what people think. Not, 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 that, not that I don't value, it's not, it's not to say that I'm right or that I don't value their opinion, I just don't value their opinion more than mine. Um, much like they're entitled to their opinion, I'm entitled yeah. to mine, only my job is to get paid to do it. I think people have gotten so accustomed to comfort and they don't realize how, how comfort kills. Like, the, the, everything bad that ever happened to you, um, you grew. Yeah. Every time you were, you were satiated or happy, you gained a lot of weight during the holidays because you're comfortable. Yeah. You, they can only surprise you if you ain't ready. Yeah. They can. So. See, it's uh, po political correctness has hurt it, and we were around when it started. Sure. But I think that that's, that says more about us as a society um, than it does about the artists. Like, I remember All in the Family was one of my favorite shows, and they said some of the most racist things I'd ever heard. But I think we had a truer picture of who we were. You don't have to pretend to be something when you're not sure who you are. And, <laughs> and I think we pretend to be further along and more accepting of things than we really are. Right. I, I think I find comedy in the darkest places and the most ironic. I think, like, matter of fact, the more, uh, the more pain there is, the more trouble there is, the more chance for irony. Like, I remember my father died in July. As he lay dying and it was hurting like a son of a bitch, I wrote jokes. Watching your father go teaches you how, how, how much time you don't have. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I just, after that, I just said, I'm going to say what I believe and do what I believe, because I know this old man right here never got to. It's like therapy for us, man. Right. That's why you could not have heard what was happening in our dressing room. Yeah. You just couldn't have, <laughs> because it was unacceptable. <laughs> you, you would be mortified. <laughs> How could they? <laughs> What was one of the fondest memories you had, man, That we road? never asked anybody for permission. We didn't ask for permission to be exactly who we were, and it paid off. It was what, aspirationally, I think we need to do as communities. Like, we all depended on each other. And from that one thing, all these careers spanned, um, all these people worked, all these people went to school, and it was just men of a, of a like mind coming together and, and working diligently and, and respecting and loving each other. And I thought that that was, that's one of the most, that's the thing, I'm, that's my most uh, resonant memory about that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, man. Boy, them boys right there. You can man. That damn Bernie Mac, oh, man. man. That dude was so... I'm not crying again. That ain't gonna happen. I ain't doing it. Yeah. We would be backstage, man, <laughs> screaming. I'm talking about <laughs> screaming, man. Bernie would say stuff, man, about his family members and... I, and, and that, to, to your point, I don't think <laughs> he could do that right now. This dude said stuff you would go, Bernie. I just don't get how anybody, I don't like anybody that believes they're above a joke isn't part of the human community. There has to be some place you go where you get to hear something profane and profound. Some place, when we were adults, our parents used to, uh, kids, our parents used to kick us out the room so they could do stuff that we knew. That, I couldn't wait to be an adult so I could kick somebody out the room and do something I wasn't yeah, supposed yeah, to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't wait to do it. So, so I think, like, even like with this whole college cheating scandal, which I never understood, because if you work hard and you give your children every advantage and they have tearing, uh, caring teachers and abundant resources and they can't pass the test, to get into college, they're either lazy or stupid. That's really it. That's, that's, yeah. that's how that go. <laughs> and, and black people, we know our kids, like, uh, we know they all got the same skill set. Like, yeah. I want to go to college. You know you ain't going to college. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about this. Now, you've done something else a lot of people know. You've been married to the same girl for 33 years, right. man. Right. 33 years, man. In your opinion, what's the secret to a successful um, marriage? I think that you have to marry somebody 
who uh, understands exactly who you are. Like, uh, now I've done a lot of things I'm certainly not proud of. Um, and I've done some things that I've been accused of, that I've been accused of things I haven't done. The, the person who, who, who loves you and knows you understands the limits and understands who you are and who you're not and makes you better where they can and, and does the best they can when, when they can. So, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I think being gone a lot, and you miss each other. And, um, but I think it's just marrying somebody literally who, who's, who makes you aspire to be better than your current circumstances. Yeah. That's been good, man. She's good people too, she is, man. She's, she's the best. She's good like people, it's, it's, it's chicks in the Bible ain't good as my old lady. Like it's chick, like literally, literally. And it, and, and, no, for real. I'm, I'm not even. And it, <laughs> and it's dudes in the Bible ain't been as bad as me, so I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. I've been with her for a long time, and it's so funny because I was with her when she was very young, and now she's older. And that, the women getting older, I think they have a harder time with it than men do, because men we think we dope no matter what. Yeah. Like women get older, and they, they forget we still think you fly. Like that menopause thing, like they will not accept that that's happening. Like, I, 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 I missed my period, I must be pregnant. No, you're 50, as you are. <laughs> you're not pregnant. Marjorie started having hot flashes. Mm -hmm. We, I, she had bought me a Sprinter for Father's Day about five years ago. Oh, oh she laid it out, doggy. We riding, we going to the airport. I'm hot. I said, okay, well, baby, take take that heavy ass coat off. So she take it off. I'm still hot. Mm -hmm. We just got in the car. We ain't even, now ain't no windows in the Sprinter. There's nothing to roll down. We got the air on. Cut the air on, Steve. Mm -hmm. Baby, the air on, the fan on four. It says blue, it's, the temperature say low. It quit saying 68, it just say low now. <laughs> it's, it's as cold as it can get it. When your temperature just say low, it's saying to you, it ain't no more damn air. <laughs> I want some more air. <laughs> I had the driver stop, slide that big door open. She got out the car in <laughs> Chicago and was outside doing like this. It was some crush construction workers. They got hoodies on, gloves, vests. They looking at her doing like this. The dude said, damn, what's wrong with her? <laughs> I said, that ain't none of your punk ass business, man. <laughs> Don't worry about what's wrong with her. Baby, just get your ass in the car, come on. I love it, man. Thank you, my brother. Hey, y'all, give it up one more time for my brother, D.L. Hughley. Folks, make sure you watch the D.L. Hughley Show weeknights at 11 p.m. on TV One. We'll be right back. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.